Lifting the handle as you go down and you, you get into that roll part of the bead. It's just a really matter of that thumb pressure there and lifting the handle. That's, that's really all that's taking place. Uh, so um, we, we, we're, we're pretty good up here. Um, <clears throat> we might as well start concentrating on what's going to happen down on this bottom part. Uh, So the transition from the bead to another code. Let's see if I can, will it, <laughs> okay. It'll see it, okay. First of all, I've got to decide really how small I want it. And, and I've gone to where mm, they've been really too small uh, to where, you know, uh, somewhere in between. So uh, we'll see if we can get there tonight. Um, Oh, okay. All right. All right. So let's continue to. And I try to tell my students that, you know, that there are really only two spots that are really suitable for turning. There's the sweet spot. And where are the sweet spots? Well, on the left side of your uh, uh, flute, uh, you, uh, you've got 11 o'clock. On the other side, you've got 1 o'clock. And your shaving should be coming directly there. So um, that's what I want to try to make sure is happening. <laughs> now I can start thinking about. Um, actually making this cold, uh, but to do it, I got some waste wood that I need to get out of the way, so take that down, it's going to be uh, in my way, so let's actually start coming in. This is still too much, so we'll take a little bit more out there. And then let's pick down a little bit more. Again, it's just perfect. And then we we'll start making that coat. It needed to come off anyhow, so. so we're getting down to about the diameter that that spindle of it needs to be.
Okay, now, having got that cove in there, uh, I probably need to go ahead and set the transition between that cove and this bead. And I can do that with the uh, uh, parting tool, like a skew. But remember, I had over here a, uh, an angle cut. So I don't want it to be a flat. I want it to be angled a little bit. So I'm just going to come in with the parting tool. And a little bit of an angle. And there I created that transition. Now I'm going ahead and finish this off. Oh, that's, that's in my way. So let's get that out. And There's something I don't really want on that, so I'm going to see if I can change it a little. Okay, so uh, at this point, probably a good thing to go ahead and do a little bit of sanding. Uh, it's going to start vibrating and, and all that kind of stuff, so... What plan are you using right now? I'm starting with the 120 and I'll go up to 1,000. There are not a lot of things that I actually go above 320, but uh, this one I do primarily because uh, I actually I started uh, trying to get more of a, uh, a glossy finish. I didn't used to do that. And so I, to, to get a nice glossy finish. Uh, All right, so. Uh, so it's there, Lee. I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. Um, there, there are two criteria that I use in speed. One is, is the lathe trying to walk away? If it is, it's too fast. And the other is, what's your fear factor? <laughs> That's about it. So, uh, I like to run mine uh, wide open uh, in my shop. Uh, so, now th there are times where where I can't. I mean, uh, when I'm turning, uh, you know, I'm turning a 12, 18 inch uh, piece that's a half inch in diameter or something like that. You can't do it fast. You got to slow it on down because all the whip and the, uh, the flexibility that's uh, all part of that wood. Uh, but you know, that's that's okay. What do I actually use to uh, uh, finish these with? We'll go ahead and put a little bit on there right now. Um, I just use, you know, the real expensive stuff, just floor wax. Uh, that's just it. Uh, honestly, I don't know how many years I've had this. I really don't. I, I, I don't even know if you can buy it anymore. Uh, but uh, uh, and all I'm doing at this point is sealing, sealing. Uh, the fibers. I'm not doing anything else to it, and it's going to be covered up when, when I put it on uh, with the Beale system uh, later on. So, uh, not a big deal there. Uh, we could go ahead. Yeah, I think I've got. I only use two finishes in my shop. Wax or shellac. 
I cut shellac ha in half, and that's all I use for bowls of shellac. That's it. I, I, I don't really use anything else. I used to, yeah, but uh, I don't anymore. Okay, so um, now we're getting down to uh, making those, those final parts, and uh, so um, we've got, here's the, there's the end, all right, so all of this is, part of that, that kind of knobby part up here, um, and it's kind of like a bead. And here's, here's where I found that uh, working with the, um, the beading tool really works nice. Because I can come in right there. And I've gotten a lot of that already done. I've got it started uh, as to what that base is going to be. And I don't have to worry so much about how far down it's come. Going to have to go down a good bit. So let's go ahead and take some more of that off. easy to, to form something like that. I think it's actually easier to do that than it is with a spindle gouge. That's just, it's just a natural tool. The, either the, the, the skew or the beading tool is just a natural uh, when it comes to, to doing that kind of stuff. So um, let's go in again. Take some of this away. Looks like we're going to get some of our color that I was hoping was going to be in the other end. It's going to be up here in this uh, top part. Oh well. Now if I left it kind of thick like it is right now, then it would be more more like a circle kind of thing. I don't, I've gotten to where I don't like that so much, so uh, I thin it down a little bit. It gives it a little bit of elongation. can clean this up a little bit. I will support this a little bit. And actually kind of makes sense to come back then. I don't think that's fine. So, you see how easy and how flexible this tool is. Yes, you can do your normal scraping the—I mean, just you know, tearing the fibers out, or you can actually slice them. This tool is wonderful when you're trying to uh, do uh, beads for a baby crib, and you got just tons of beads on there. This tool is just wonderful. Oh, you know, they're, they're really small, they're for a small part, that kind of stuff. Or maybe you've got, um, uh, maybe like a, a candlestick where you have uh, the kind of large bead and a very small bead. Just for accent purposes, this tool is really 
easier than even the spindle gouge on that. So, uh, and it, there's absolutely nothing uh, wrong with using uh, the skew for doing that kind of stuff. The problem with that I've discovered over the years in using the skew is that um, you've got such a large surface that your eye has trouble making sure that that this point actually does and continues to do all the work. And so I actually had uh, 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 somebody wanted a, a quote the other day uh, for um, doing 210 uh, beads that were three and a half inches in diameter or three and three quarters, can't remember now. Uh, and uh, they came down uh, between each one of them. There were, uh, um, uh, uh, there were 10 inch pieces and you know, so many per, 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 the, uh, per piece. And uh, there were three quarters, of, uh, three quarters of an inch diameter and uh, then uh, an eighth inch in between, or a quarter inch between each bead. Well, I started out saying, okay, uh, this tool will be great for it. And so, you know, I, I, I just want to see what it's going to take in terms of time so I can figure out the cost. So I'm doing that and I'm going down and you get down to a place where it's not really that continuous curve. You're really going down, not at a straight line, but you have very little curve to it. And I found that this tool didn't work so well because you're going down so straight that all of a sudden it becomes easy to start cutting on the, the, the uh, um, uh, planing part and psh, you got to catch. Real easy. Okay, so um, try it with a, uh, with a skew. No, nah, it didn't really work so well with a skew. So try it with a spindle gouge. The spindle gouge worked beautifully doing that exact kind of thing and then getting down to maybe the last eighth of an inch and then coming back in with a, a skew uh, doing that. So sometimes different tools, but they're all using the same principle. Same principle. All right, so um, let's see if we can uh, actually get this thing over here. Um, I actually have a big bag of nothing but finials. I turn finials just for relaxation. I just put a piece of wood in here. I mean, I, you know, you, don't, you can't throw away wood, so uh, turn it. And I, I, little old pieces of wood, and I just turn finials out of them. And you know, I, I throw them in the bag. Uh, and I put uh, uh, about a half inch uh, 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 tenon on the bottom so I could use them for something. I never do, but I, I, my bag just grows bigger and bigger. But it's that kind of idea. So all of my finials all have pretty much the same kind of shape to them. Yes. So. I heard somebody talking about uh, a piece of wood that was really hard uh, here earlier, uh, and, and you know. I'm one that says, the harder the wood, the better I like it. The harder it is, the easier it turns. Doesn't mean I can turn it faster, but it just means that it's going to turn easier. I don't have to turn nearly as much. The grain's going to hold together. I can really concentrate on the shape, all those kinds of things. So, uh, so uh, anyhow, all right. One of the things that I've found 
over the years is that in parting these, if you can actually do it, not to where it's just coming to a point, but actually it's coming with a little bit of a flat spot on the end, it serves you well because you're going to actually uh, come in and make a little bit of a hole and then with your uh, yeah just a little bit of a uh, uh, yeah I'm done. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, ultimately, we're going to put one of these guys in there, the little the lie hooks. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we're actually going to take and uh, not take long to. A little bit of tripling. I suppose every turner has to learn that when you're using uh, these buffing wheels that you basically have to have almost like a 45 degree, kind of like you do with a, uh, with a uh, uh, scraping tool. You got to have that kind of angle to go with it. So, okay. Uh, otherwise, you get that. Sometimes you're lucky. This one has a very nice uh, sharp edge right up here. Uh, when you get through, you can feel that. Uh, and a little bit of white diamond. We're talking about the oak uh, earlier. Um, I'm hoping that I actually get the opportunity to turn um, some objects. Um, some of them will be tea lights, some of them will be uh, um, stoppers, who knows, maybe some more kind of stuff. Furman University has had, uh, uh, they've got a lot of oak trees that have already li have lived out their life. And so they've either come down or they're coming down, I'm not sure which now. And um, so the alumni are looking for a way of having some mementos, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, I think it's going to be fun, especially with the tea lights, because they lend themselves so well to uh, using the texturing tool. All right, and then we get the carnauba in here.
Where did you get the smaller diameter buffing wheels? I bought from Craft Supplies. I don't remember. Craft Supplies sells them. That's where I thought. That's where I thought I got mine, but from Craft Supplies. But okay. Huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so that's it. So, um, questions. Do you sell those? What? Do you sell those? Yeah. Or by how much? Thirty bucks. Uh, all right. Questions? Anyone? You're all just too quiet. <laughs> okay. Well, so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, you can all go home early and get a good night's sleep, you know? So, uh, thank you, Doc.